Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Exciting day today. We've got an awesome, I guess we'll call it an unboxing. It seems like more than that. I finally replaced my bandsaw. We have a couple bandsaws in this shop. I'm going to show them to you for comparison purposes. And I've actually got a chunk of wood here, a chunk of ash that I'm going to test cut like this on three different bandsaws, including my new one. And we're going to see how far they get and if they can cut all the way through. So let's take a look for size comparison purposes. This is an old King Canada bandsaw. Um, I'm standing next to it so you can see how big it is. It's sitting on a table here. Nice small blade, about a quarter inch. We use this, it's got fine teeth. We use this for cutting thin pieces and you know, relatively intricate patterns if we want to. That's what this one's good for. But I don't think that it's gonna make it all that far through our test piece. Let's take a look at the next one and then I'll show you mine and we will hack this thing up. And then because I can basically go back in time when it comes to making a video, after we've compared the three bandsaws and tested them and I've shown you the new one, We'll go back in time and assemble it and set it up. Let's do it. All right, here's our second one. You can see, again, with me standing next to it, what we're dealing with in terms of size, similar blade, quarter inch, a uh, little bit more throat depth on this one if you want it. Bigger motor. I don't know if that's gonna be able to make it through this. We'll see. And then finally, the one that we're gonna be opening up, assembling and setting up today in the video, this guy. This is the new, this is the new tool. If this can't cut through this, I am, uh, I'm gonna return it. <laughs> We've got a three quarter inch blade on this thing. It should make short work of this and any finger that I put near it. Not gonna be doing any detail work on it because again, I've got a three quarter inch blade on here. You can put a smaller one, a quarter inch. This thing can open up to like 14 inches. So, you know, I should be able to saw any number of things in half here, do recuts, tack up a cow. I don't know. Uh, let's get started with the test before I say something else that is utterly ridiculous. Forgive the pun. That was terrible. My God. Well, I was impressed by how that little King Canada one performed. Didn't think it would make it all the way through. Um, I was, let's say, unsurprised by how that second one performed. It started to wander a lot. I really couldn't get it to correct. That one might need some adjustment, but generally speaking, it, it's gonna struggle through something like this. And I've had it kind of quit on me on a couple pieces around this thickness before. If it got up to the, the thickest point, and I can't say I'm surprised by how this one performed either. Uh, this thing is slightly inset, so I may change that. I may shim the guard up a little bit. Probably will. Uh, but this went through pretty much as quick as I could push it. So 
we have a winner. Let's uh, get this thing unboxed and set up. So for starters here, I can tell you, this thing is really well packaged. It's also really heavy. Uh, so it was interesting even getting the box into the area of the shop where I needed to assemble it. But here we go, as you would expect from a saw like this, well, well packaged, put in there really nicely, and uh, it, it was relatively easy to assemble. We'll go through the process here kind of quickly. There are a lot of adjustments that can be made, um, but Laguna actually has a great series of videos on how to do that. So there's no point in me trying to cover all of that information in one video. It'll be ridiculously long and uh, it won't be any better than what they did. So I'm unboxing this here and uh, like I said, it's heavy. The bulk of it is all one piece. You can see me kind of looking at it exasperately there, uh, wondering how best to get this out of here because there's stuff packaged on the other side as well. So quick stretch, limber up, flip this thing up. Don't let it fall out of the box. Success. <laughs> Uh, and then I just kind of gently work it out of the box. It, it will stand up this way. This obviously isn't the stand and it's not the correct height, but it will stand up this way. So you don't have to worry too much pulling it out of here. You know, get that, uh, get that separated from the back because there's also stuff packed under it. So really it's just a matter of gently pulling it out of here so that you can access the stuff that's in there from the other side. Uh, this would be more logically a, a two person job, probably moving this saw around. But obviously it can be done with one person, as you're seeing right now. So there's the base from the other side. We'll kind of, we'll, we're running most of this at, at 300%. It, you know, it's funny, I, I'm, I'm running at triple speed for this video, and I feel like I should be able to actually do things closer to this speed. So I guess I'm just shambling around most of the time when I'm doing stuff like this. One thing I will say about this, uh, the, the written instructions are not very explicit. There's not a whole lot there. It's pretty intuitive though, pretty straightforward to put together. Um, but for the setup, you are going to want to watch those Laguna videos uh, because the instructions cover part of it, but not as much as you might want. I can also tell you that this, getting this base put together on the ground like this is a good way if you're kind of rickety like me to have your back end up pretty sore. So be smart about how you undertake that little part of the process. Now, to get the bottom on, you're not going to lift the saw on top of it, so you kind of have to prop it up. I've put it on a pallet, but it would have been helpful to have it on something bigger and to maybe block up the motor a bit to, to get it even. This did work, though, and it, it wasn't too bad. Um, so I got it kind of largely set on there, and then when I get it upright, I will go in and tighten all these bolts the rest of the way and make sure that everything's nice and sturdy. There was a little playing around to make sure that everything went in straight, but we got it figured out, uh, getting the feet on here real quick, and then it'll be time to stand this thing up, which puts us about 40% of the way through the entire process of getting this ready to go. So once it's stood up, it starts to actually look like a saw. This is where I took a nice break to take some pictures of it, <laughs> which was foolish. Um, carefully taking this gigantic bag off of here, which is something that I probably shouldn't have had to do carefully. And here we go. This is starting to actually look like a saw now. And at this point, I'm, I'm probably already tired. <laughs> so I finish uh, cranking up the base. Make sure that you, you do that. It's important once it's standing upright that you, you make sure everything's nicely in place. This thing is, is big, and you don't want it coming apart. Uh, mandatory play with that little lever on the back. Uh, and here's your kind of look at what the saw, well, looks like at this point. Really nice, much nicer than any saw I've used before. So now it's time to get the table installed. Won't go through the entire process here, but it uh, it can tilt, so I had to get it leveled off there, install the knobs, the locking knobs for that, get my ruler in place and make sure that it's squared up with where the blade goes so that you know it'll work and it'll actually be at zero if I want to use the fence for a particular measurement. Then I installed a bar here for the fence. Uh, the bolts go through the big holes, so don't put it on backward. It might be tempting to put those spacers in the big holes. I almost did. Uh, don't do that. That will be a waste of your time. And then the fence. So this thing holds the fence and you can get different sizes and lengths of fence, which are the, you know, that 
that allows you a whole bunch of really cool options uh, and you can get ones that go you know in both directions but the one it comes with is is big and works well uh, really excited about this this is probably the coolest tool that I own at this point and uh, well certainly one of the more expensive ones and I'm, I'm hoping to get a lot of use out of it particularly with the great guitar build off kind of upon us now uh, this is a great time for me to finally have this show up and, and get it assembled I can tell you right off the bat it's really well made uh, it's not something that I can like carry through an affiliate link so I'm not trying to sell you one I'm just saying it's yeah it's a pretty good piece of equipment I'm really happy with it so now we get into the blade installation and the setup I got grease all over my hand so I got to clean that off <laughs> and you, you take the guards out open up the blade I'm telling you the blade is also pretty bloody expensive for this thing uh, it's a big one I've got the kind of crosscut king I think it's called it's also made by Laguna and it's three quarters of an inch wide and has pretty big teeth so it uh, it gets the job done quickly and it'll be great for what I plan on using it for you won't be imitating a scroll saw with it it's not for detail work or corners or whatever uh, but you can do what you need to with it and this saw takes anything up to a three-quarter inch blade so this is the maximum size available and frankly a three-quarter inch blade should probably be about the maximum size that a bandsaw takes anyway for for this type of work but you know that's not up to me to decide so we put the blade in through the the side of the table there turn the corner 90 degrees and get it positioned on the wheels pretty straightforward process and then we use this lever and the dial on the bottom to get the tension set there's a gauge there it's pretty easy you just get it set to the three-quarter inch blade area and if you're using a different uh, blade well put it in one of the other spots you're gonna want to run the wheel a few times just by hand make sure everything's sliding correctly uh, you know you can take a look through this window on the side to make sure that the blade is centered which is a nice little touch uh, because you do want the blade centered this is a crowned wheel a crowned rubber so it's the recommendation from Laguna is that you don't have the teeth hanging off the end or anything like that you just get it centered on there perfectly and that's what I would do with any of my bandsaws I know some people like to have the teeth hanging off the front I don't I center my blades on the wheels and in particular with these crowned ones that's uh, the way to do it or at least that's my opinion but hey what do I know so Next up, I'm getting all of the guides and stuff adjusted. There's actually, well, it's fairly straightforward, but there's a lot that can be adjusted on this saw. So again, I direct you to Laguna's uh, tutorials because they're a lot more precise on this. But the, the Coles notes, so to speak, are you want them close to the blade so it doesn't have room to roam. Uh, you want the thing pushing or pretty much touching the back of the blade. We've got really nice kind of uh, no friction guides on this. You, you do want to make sure that the blade is still running smoothly without interference though, which is why I keep playing around and spinning it. And then once you've got that set up, there are a couple of things to, to put back in from the bottom. And there's a set of guides on the bottom as well. So this one has an adjustable set of guides above and below the table uh, to really keep things on track. I'm really looking forward to, uh, to getting some work done with this guy. So next I put in my uh, my guard, and like I said before, that one is a little low. It's slightly inset into the table. Now that's better than having it uh, poking out, depending on what you're doing. I'm largely going to be working on pieces where that won't be an issue at all, but I still think I'll probably shift it up to make it you know, as close to flush with the table as possible. And, and in order to do that, likely all I have to do is maybe put a piece of tape or two uh, underneath the piece of masking tape, so I might just do that. Next up, I'm going to get this blade, uh, sorry, this table leveled. Make sure it's perfectly square with the blade. You can use a level, but it's better to, to just confirm that it's square by using a square and, and the blade, in my opinion, because if there's any anything weird going on with the blade being out, if your table's on, or if your bandsaw's on slightly uh, unlevel ground, if it's skewed in any way, if one of the feet is sitting on a piece of cardboard or something by accident, then leveling it's not going to give you 90 degrees so use a square square it up square up your uh, your fence as well in case you need to shim that and you should be good to go 
that's about it for this one guys this is all set up we're going to be doing some cutting with it soon i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please feel free to give it a thumbs up i would appreciate it helps me out as always and i hope you guys are looking forward to uh the great guitar build off and the other videos we got coming out well would you look at that maybe i'll win the great guitar build off after all